I know you don't want to do it. Can I have my other burrito? You can have your other burrito. Can you explain to me why? Like, I have a GPS system that has one of, like, those weighted, you know, stands on it. So it's not, like, attached to the dashboard, but it's, like, weighed down so the GPS doesn't move. How come this bean burrito from Mighty Taco hasn't moved a centimeter, but my GPS slides all over my dashboard? Explain to me why this bean burrito from Mighty Taco is more stalwart than my than the thing that holds my GPS in place. Well, two reasons. One, I'm the best driver you ever encounter in your life. Um, Jesus, have you seen past episodes? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't hit anybody yet. It's normally because we got these lights on. People are afraid of and us. And that old lady was not my fault. <laughs> she rolled the dice when she stepped off the curb. <laughs> Second thing is that they have stuff in there is concrete that they call meat. Right. Oh, please. Going back to the old lady. You saw the tennis balls on the bottom of her walker smoke and she was trying to move so fast across the pavement. <laughs> they were tennis balls. She's an athlete. <laughs> Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hit the bell! Hit the bell! Separate. Boom. Yeah. Boom. That's right. Boom. Um, we don't. I don't want to do this. You don't want to. Talk I don't want to do. No, don't. Don't even. Don't even mention his name. Don't, yeah, not even in a whisper. Don't even do it. So we he, allow me to parlay. You're gonna do it, aren't you? Uh, allow me to parlay. He, two two I questions. Would, Two questions. Disclaimer. I'm, I didn't want to talk about this. I don't want to do this to you guys. Okay. He's two, making me. Two questions. Is what? LaShawn McCoy done as a Buffalo Bill and to his Le'Veon Bell uh, coming to Buffalo? He did it. Yeah. Ow. Got to talk about it. Ow. We have to talk about it. Bills have the cap. Speaking of eating feelings. Yeah, I know, right? Let me let me hammer down this this. Oh, my God. Burrito. I'm going to eat while he does this. All right, so let's. He look. just said Le'Veon Bell and Buffalo. Why do you do this to everybody? Well, there's some clear problems with that, right? Like the offensive line. But you have to ask yourself: Does Le'Veon Bell mitigate the problems on offense? What? Does he mitigate the problems? Is Le'Veon on offense? Bell and Buffalo Bills an even a, even a, an option? Le'Veon Bell sat out this year because of money. He didn't care about being competitive. So, yes, the Buffalo Bills are an option. It was all about the Benjamins. That's it. It was all about getting paid. And they're third. Well, he's got Drew Rosenhouse as his agent, so. Point being is, I, I'm pretty sure that I've seen calculations are correct. Bills are third in cap room come yeah. this offseason. Behind the Jets. Oh, then they're fourth then. Yeah. I thought they were behind Cleveland. Uh-huh. And they're behind Indianapolis, two teams that already have the running backs. Yep. No, the Jets, they do not have a running back. No. Um, and Oakland is up there, too. So, I mean, there's there's running back needy teams that have a ton of cap space. Okay, so LaShawn McCoy next year is going to be 31 years old. Uh, he is, you want to cut him, it saves you $6.4 million. You save money? Well, Cutting not, McCoy? I mean, not uh, against his salary. He's only got one year left in his deal. So, you cut LaShawn McCoy, cost you 2.6 mil in dead money. So basically what you're doing is, in order to free up the roster space for a starter, you are you cut McCoy, that frees up $2.6 million. That basically just means Bell's contract, after the after his contract, just going to cost an extra 2.6 to fill the same position. Right? He knows. Yeah. I mean, in the NFL landscape. Comparatively. Yes. Right. So let's look at the most expensive contracts at the running back position. So you just said, make sure, so it's clear. Yeah. So no one has any confusion. You just said, when you cut LaShawn McCoy, yeah. you have a 2.6 dead money bomb go off. Then you could sign Le'Veon Bell to a yeah. Buffalo Bill. Yeah. And yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the hill I'm willing to die on today. And here's why. So one of the many problems with LaShawn McCoy, and you can go back to when... Don't give me that look. And you can go back to um, prior to the trade deadline, right? Bean and McDermott were like, no, McCoy's going to be on this team. He's going to be on. But the more and more he plays, the more and more you can see his time is winding down. Because this line is not good, right? But McCoy is showing some horrendous habits. He was great when Ivory was out. 
But as soon as Ivory came back and he wasn't the only back in that backfield, he needs to be fed the ball 30 times a game. Mm -hmm. he, need, he needs the constant touches. You wouldn't give Barry Sanders 15 carries a game, would you? No, you wouldn't, right? No. You feed him the ball because Barry was a rhythm runner. McCoy is a rhythm runner. you got to feed him the ball out. This team's not feeding him the ball. Okay. So With you so far. So you're saying that the, the scope of this offense – Moving forward, when they hired Ty, Todd Haley next year, they're going to need Le'Veon Bell. I think. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, you see, you see the direction that I'm going here. You right? do realize that I have, I'm of the mindset that Dable would mess up a one car parade. You want to bring? <laughs> All right. So your most expensive running backs in the NFL based off of contract in years. Are you ready? Todd Gurley, number one, fifty-seven point five million dollars. Devonta Freeman, five years, forty-one point two million dollars. Guess who's number three? Sean McCoy. Ooh. So you're going to cut the third most expensive back in the game right now for Le'Veon Bell. Who would be the most expensive? The most expensive, yeah. So how much are you really giving up here? It's going to cost you 2.6 to cut McCoy. You save six, right? What do you sign Bell to? Four? Oh, Bell's going to want, he's going to want a five-year deal at least. So you're signing him to five <clears throat> and out to Gurley. Gurley's at 57. He's going to want at least... 65. I signed him to a five-year deal, front-load it, so that when you have to sign Edmonds and Allen, well, you're, that's exactly, you're not worried you, about cutting you need Bell. To, yeah, you need to clean yourself out after by year five, right? You need to clean out most no, of No, I'm drinking problem. your Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. It's tasty, isn't it? No. It's tasty. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to think about Bell being here because then when he's not, I'm going to be disappointed again. So... Let's, let's do the math on this. So, 65. 5 at 65 is only 13 mil. He walked away from bigger this year. Yeah. What was his, what was this? What he was wants, he time? wants $75 million, probably 50 guaranteed. He wants quarterback money. Yeah. Okay. So, let's just look at quarterback money. Let's look at Kirk Cousins. No, let's not. It's, it's three for 86, wasn't it? Cousins? Yeah. All guaranteed, wasn't it? It was fully guaranteed, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, that's not going to happen. I mean, let's not. I mean, Jesus. Bell is a better fun. running back than Cousins is a quarterback. That's going to be his argument. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... I get it, right? I get I get it. I'm going to throw up. Three years, 84. Fully guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. Stupid. Bell's going to want five out of 100. That's now, mind stupid. You, five out of 100 is almost double what Gurley's making. That's stupid. It is stupid. But he walked away from what eighteen. Can the Bills year? afford it? Yeah, they can afford it. <laughs> yeah, it's no, no, no qualms about it. The Bills can afford Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. Are your headlights on? Yeah. You sure one's, about that? One's burnt out. Oh, okay. Don't even punch me and say Padilla. Like, <laughs> you mean there's more headlights on the on the dash of this car than <laughs> on the front of it? I can't see. I, I'm, I'm using the force, Luke. <laughs> Is Bell a big enough fish that if you sign him, you want other people? Other people will want to come to Buffalo. Yeah. Like receivers and linemen and stuff. The problem is, I don't. I mean, what receivers are there going to be that you even care about? Bell. <laughs> That's what I mean. You sign Bell, and that would that would be unfortunately the nail in the coffin for a lot of teams, right? Because you're going to invest all your money in Le'Veon Bell which is going to lock your team down from re-signing your own drafted players for the next three years, right? Bills don't have that problem. Bills could sign Bell, mm -hmm. take it easy in the next two off-seasons, you re-sign Milano, and you can't re-sign him this off-season, but next off-season you can re-sign him because he's on a four-year deal. He's a fifth-round player. Yeah, four so he's years, on a four-year yeah. deal, mm -hmm. you can re-sign him after the third season. So you can't re-sign him this off-season, you can re-sign him next off-season. Then you start getting into the, are we going to exercise the fifth-year option on Edmonds, on Allen, or do we just want to sign him to contract extension? So you can start having that conversation the following offseason for them. So you really, if you're the Bills, you have three offseasons before you have to worry about Edmonds and Allen. Okay? You've got three offseasons to worry about them. you got two offseasons before you have to worry about Milano. Outside of that, who are you really concerned about re-signing on this team? You're not. Dawkins? He's a second round player, so you're still gonna be concerned about him. You're gonna be concerned about him not his, this offseason. But his level of next play next Yeah, but his level of play won't yeah. endear him to a top ten contract. Right, exactly. So you're not really concerned about Dawkins at this point well, either. Man. So this offseason's a freebie. 
next off season, you have to re-sign Milano and Dawkins if you're really even concerned about re-signing Milano and Dawkins. You might just let them play out their four-year deal and then see where the market sits for there. I would not do that with Milano. Dawkins, mm -mm. I'd think about it. Mm -mm. But, but what if Bell comes in you got to sign Dawkins still. Let's say he's your guy. you got to yeah. sign Dawkins. Bell comes in. Bills go to the playoffs. He rushes for 1,300 yards. Dawkins becomes more expensive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So he affects all the players around him as well. Right. It's all cyclical, right? It really is. It's all such cyclical. A, such a fun conversation. Though. But the fact remains that Bell instantly improves your offense over LaShawn McCoy. I know a lot of people love Shady, but the truth is you're going to give Levy... Hey, You're a lot of people love Freddie, but they knew Shady was such a good upgrade. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Freddie to death, but Shady versus Freddie, when, when we got Shady? It was no contest. No. Yeah, it was no contest. But now, we're in the same situation. So you can be rid yourself of LaShawn McCoy, and hit the third most expensive contract at the position over the course of the length of the contract, or, you know, you go back with Shady and just say, we're just going to be better about getting the ball. But you still have to draft a player, mm -hmm. right? And put draft a player plus the Sean McCoy does not equal Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell in Buffalo. I can't believe you did it. I mean, tell me he makes the offense worse. The question is, does he come here with these level of player? He sat out an entire year over money. The level of play is not a concern for him. I don't think he cares. I think he truthfully believes that he can go to any NFL team and instantly be a playoff contender, and they'll win. He doesn't care about the level of talent around him because he is that good. I truthfully believe he feels that way. Now, that might be the reason he doesn't sign in Buffalo, because he gets in a room with McDermott, McDermott goes, you're an arrogant piece of <laughs> and says, no. You sat out an entire year over money. We don't want that in our clubhouse. The only thing that will stop Le'Veon Bell from signing in Buffalo is not the money. Money's not a problem. It's Le'Veon Le Bell. Bell. 